Okay, so let's get started on our chapter three. We're going to be talking about describing data, and really when we're describing data, we're talking about five things. The first thing we'll be covering is the center of the data. Uh, where is the middle? What's the most, uh, what's most of the data doing? That's really what we're talking about, center. We'll talk about variation, how is the, the, uh, the data changing, the distribution, any outliers, if you've never heard of outliers, we'll talk about outliers for a while, and then if there's any changes over time, how the data is changing. So let's get started. If we're keeping track, we're on chapter three. And we're describing data. And the five characteristics, again, that we're going to be talking about are the center, any variation we might have, how the data is distributed, whether it's normally distributed or something else. If there are any outliers, we'll talk about those in a bit. And lastly, any changes over time. Okay, our first characteristic is center. And what we mean by center is really the, the middle of our data set. What's happening kind of the most often is usually what we think of when we say is center. What, is, what value is most of the data surrounding? That's our center. So when we say that, we can think of it kind of like the middle of our data set. And really, we have three ways of describing the center. At least three common ways. I'll put that over here. The first way that we describe the center is if I would say to you this. If I said, oh, it's just the average. You ever heard the average before? Do you know how to find an average? If you say in your head, yeah, you're probably talking about the first average that I'm talking about. You see, there's three averages we'll talk about, three centers, three ways to find the center. And the first one is, is like the most common one. It's the one that you think of when I say the average. If you're going to find the average age of this classroom, what would you do? I'm not, I'm sorry, the average age of the classroom, that doesn't make sense. I mean the average age of the people in the classroom. The classroom's like five years old. You guys are more than five. So the average age of the people in this classroom, how would you do that? Say that louder so I can hear it. Add all the ages up and then divide by Exactly. Is that what you guys are thinking also? Mm -hmm. That type of average, that center, that's called the mean. The mean average. So when we say center, we could be talking about the mean. And we'll get, we're going to be using the mean quite a bit in this class. What we mean by the mean is the arithmetic average. And basically, you add up all the things, you divide by the number of things you added. And that, that's really what our average does. Like in our class, if we wanted to find the average age, she's absolutely right. We add everyone's age together, and we divide by how many people we're in here right now. And we, uh, whatever we get, that would be the average, what most people would be close to. So 
So we add all the values. and divide by the number of values you added. We're going to make this a lot easier than that definition, though. We're going to use some symbols to represent this. So when we were talking about the mean, let's try to make it a little bit more mathy, introduce some, some symbols here. The mean is going to equal, we know what that means. Well, it is a division problem, right? So a division problem implies we're going to have a fraction here. Your favorite. You love fractions, don't you? Don't you? No one likes fractions, they're harder. But this just means division in our case. The mean is we're adding up all the values, so how can we represent adding up all this stuff? We used a symbol earlier in this class that did that. What was that? Sigma. Yeah, that's sigma. That's exactly right. That's sigma. So we're adding up all the values. And you know what we're going to use for the letter of our values is the same thing you use for a letter for any other math class that you don't know the exact value of. What's that? X. Yeah, some sort of variable. In our case, we used x. You're exactly right. So sum of x, that means you're adding up all the data values that you have. Now we're going to divide it by the number of values. Now I'll give you a better way to represent this in, in a second. Number of values. Now I do have to give you some notation over here because this one, I can't give you one letter yet because it's going to depend on something. Now I'm going to tell you what it depends on in like 20 seconds, two minutes and 20 seconds, okay, about then. So we have, the mean is you add everything up, you divide by the number of values you added. Are you okay with the notation here so far? So our sigma means sum, x is the variable we use for our data, or a data value. Now for this thing, we're going to use two different letters to represent the number of values. Listen carefully. We're going to use two different letters to represent the number of values. It depends on whether you're talking about the average of a population or the average of a sample. Do you remember the differences there? Parameters dealt with populations and statistics dealt with samples. Remember that? Well, there, there's differences in some of the formulas we use. Not in this particular one, but in some of the formulas they're different if you're talking about a population versus if you're talking about a sample. And so we have different letters to show that. That's the only reason why. You're going to do the same math, it's just how you, it, it's what you're calling it. Not your head if you're with me on that. Okay, so we're going to use two different letters here. The lower case letter N stands for the number of values if you're talking about a sample. So number of items or values, number of items or values in a sample. Can you guess what we're going to use for a population? It's not little n. Big n. Populations are generally bigger, right? So we use big n. Would you like a hand motion too? I promise we can have fun in here. It's legal. So little n stands for the number of items in a sample. Big N stands for the number of items in a population. And for, for chance, you, you know all those pieces of information. population. Well, then that also means if we have a symbol for the mean, it's going to be different for a sample and for a population. Well, that makes sense because the ends are going to be different for a sample and a population. So we can call mean two different by two different things depending on whether we're talking about a sample or a population. Again, if we're talking about the mean of a sample, what we do 
as we write this x, just like you would a variable, but you're going to put something on top of it, this little bar. So it's x with a little bar on top. You know how you say that? x bar. Seriously, now you're making that up. Honestly. So this is x bar. It's, it's the mean. It's the sample mean. If we talk about a population mean, we're not going to use x bar. Uh, we're going to use this Greek letter. Looks like that. Do you see how it kind of looks like an M and it kind of looks like a U? Do you see that? Do you know how you say that? Mew. Mew. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Mew. Like a, like a really weird cow. <laughs> Mew. Do you know I used to live on a dairy? I did. And I, I, I developed the best cow noise ever. Maybe I'll share it with you sometime. But after listening to like millions of cows, well actually it was like 6,000 cows, but I heard, let's see if I can do it. It's just like that. <laughs> Wasn't that pretty good? Yeah. I've had lots of practice, folks. Uh, population mean. How my dairy friends would be proud of me. <laughs> Okay, so we have this idea of mean. It's the first center of our data. It's the arithmetic average means. Basically, in either case, you're going to be adding up all your entries and divided by the number of values you just added. We just call it different things depending on different uh, cases, whether we're talking about samples or populations. So for a sample, we have this x bar, and we go. The sample is going to be the sum of x. Sample means sum of x divide by the number of values. In our case, if we're talking about sample mean, notice how the sample mean is x bar. Uh, what n should we use, a big n or a little n? That's how we're going to represent the formula for sample mean. Now listen, in this one case, you don't do anything different calculation-wise when you calculate the population mean, but we just have different symbols for it. So the symbol for population mean is our mu. And we have the same idea, sum of x, but the x values don't change, but now we're just going to use capital N. So just get used to the idea that whether when we're talking about parameters and when we're talking about statistics, we may be using different letters even though we might be doing exactly the same thing. These you do, do you see you do exactly the same thing? You should call them something different, that's it. Let's go ahead and give this, give this a try, just to make sure we have this idea down. Are there any questions before we get on? Before we get on to this thing? So we have this idea called center, it's like the middle of our, our data. Uh, we haven't talked about any of these yet, we're just really on our, our mean so far. But the mean is calculated by adding up all the values divided by the number of values you added, whether you're in a sample or a population. So let's take a look at this sample of data. You know what would be awesome if someone's watching that video and they hear the cow noise and be like,